Okay, good evening everyone. And uh, it's my pleasure to be here uh, talking about my own community. And at the outside, I would like to thank the Khaki Lab for uh, providing this opportunity and for this kind of an initiative which they have taken up. And uh, it's really nice to reach out to people through this uh, mode of communication when we can't uh, really meet at this point of time in this whole scenario. And uh, thanks to Bharatbhai, Farooq, Sneha and Sukhiji for uh, being there and making this happen today. Uh, so the title goes Sings and Calls Sikh Community of Mumbai. Uh, and uh, Basically, what I'm going to uh, go through this uh, presentation is the, uh, talking about, in general, about the Sikh community in Maharashtra and Mumbai. And uh, as the title says, Sings and Cores, uh, we are also going to talk about the culture of uh, the Sikhs, uh, not in Mumbai, but in general, the Sikh culture. And these are just a few pictures which I have uh, reflecting what is a sing and what is a core, uh, which I will be explaining further. And the structure of the presentation goes like this, as you can see, uh, we need, we'll be talking about who is a Sikh and how uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji and Guru Gobind Singh Ji were connected to Maharashtra. And then we go ahead with the Sikh migrants uh, on different occasions due to various reasons and their contribution to the city and Maharashtra also in some form of. And the second part will be the vibrant colors of Punjabi culture, which is uh, which everyone, everyone enjoys a lot and a very lively kind of a community and a society. Uh, the term uh, or the words with sing and cause which we have used, I will be uh, explaining that those words when I talk about when did they get this kind of a identity and a recognition. So uh, that's the reason I'm not starting with the title, but then we first need to know who is a Sikh. So for a brief uh, introduction of that, uh, you know, the community and the religion being one of the youngest in the world. And uh, who is a Sikh? The, the word pronunciation, the word Sikh uh, pronounced also very differently by people because once uh, they don't, uh, you know, they are not able to get to that. Some is, uh, uh, in some languages, they call it as Shik or Sikh or Sikh. So the uh, exact uh, pronunciation can get in the dictionary as such. So Sikh is uh, derived from the Sanskrit word uh, Shiksha, meaning the disciple. And a Sikh means a disciple or a learner. You know, when you elaborate it further, we can say the one who embraces uh, the Guru's path in search of uh, the spiritual enlightenment. That is how a Sikh is looked upon. And uh, as we go by the Oxford Dictionary, a Sikh is definitely a member of the monotheist Sikh, which has been founded uh, by Guru Nanak Dev Ji and further carried by the nine gurus and the ten further that is what we will be discussing and wh mcleod further defines uh, a sikh as one who believes in the religion of the ten gurus in and in none other now none other here is none other human figure as such but yes there is a guru beyond the ten gurus which we will be which you all will be knowing which we will be discussing further in our discussions just a, a brief of uh, the Sikh Gurus, the 10 Sikh Gurus, you can see the pictures which have been put up and the names and uh, the Guru Granth Sahib, the holy book, Sri Guru Granth Sahib, the holy book in the center and that is what the 11th Guru as the living Guru, what we call it as referred to as, uh, which I'll further tell you that why it is the holy book or the 11th Guru or the living Guru. Uh, just a glimpse of uh, the 10 gurus and their names which I have uh, put up for your uh, reference and uh, beginning with uh, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji and concluding with Guru Bobin Singh Ji and the 11th Guru as the holy book. How it came to be called as the holy book will be our next further discussion. Uh, coming to the Sikh religion, yes, as I mentioned, just mentioned, uh, 
Guru Nanak Dev Ji, right? The uh, 15th and 16th century, the life period, and the first Guru and the founder of the Sikh religion. Uh, and Guru Gobind Singh, I've highlighted the two, uh, three important uh, uh, things here. Uh, that does not mean that the other uh, Guru's uh, contribution is not to be. But then because we are not uh, only talking about the religion, so just the focus on a few uh, uh, things which I need to bring out is, again, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, the 10th Guru who founded the Khalsa Panth in the um, uh, 16, 1699 at Anandpur Sahib and the Khalsa is basically the pure and Guru Gobind Singh Ji being the Sant Sipahi, uh, that is how we refer to him as also. Then the Guru Granth Sahib, as I just mentioned, the living Guru and how did that acquire the status of the living Guru in 1708 and uh, at the Apchal Nagar Hazur Sahib Nanded and that day is uh, marked as the Gurta Gaddi the living Guru, Guru Granth Sahib Ji. The, uh, the whole concept uh, behind, as I understand, of Sri Guru Granth Sahib being uh, given the Gurta Gaddi by the 10th Guru, uh, it is uh, the, when you, when you go into the details of the uh, Guru Granth Sahib Ji, you will know that the number of uh, writings or the text of this holy scripture is having the writings of saints, poets and peeps from different different parts of the country, caste, community and religion. So it reflects, uh, uh, it gives a holistic kind of uh, an understanding and the equality as such which you will get through this uh, Sikh scripture and that is what Guru Gobind Singh Ji felt that to the whole uh, life what all the gurus have gone through to the difficult times fighting the Mughals uh, uh, since uh, the uh, times uh, the gurus have been taking their positions and all this struggle which they have gone through uh, so keeping that in mind probably Guruji felt that uh, everyone should be uh, all people should be connected to this uh, Granth Sahib which will give them an insight into equality and insight into uh, a bonding uh, insight into you know bringing them together uh, as oneness and such and when we begin with Guru Nanak Ji and the Ek Omkar what we say is the one almighty so we all are the children of the one almighty so when you see this uh, read the scripture and try to understand and go into it there is where uh, I, I presume that uh, uh, Guru Granth Sahib gives us the variety of the learnings, the not only the values, every scripture definitely gives it. But at the same time, uh, what I understand is that this shows uh, equality, unity, and a bonding which is to be created with the Almighty and not with an individual. So that is what I understand from this, uh, uh, the, why the, it is a living Guru. And definitely that we need to not bow down before any human being as a Guru. Definitely we need a Guru. Your Guru means the God. The Almighty. So that is what uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji referred to as. So uh, that is the reason that Sikhs have only to bow down to the God and that is the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji and not an idol worship and not a, a human being that is to be uh, worshipped. Even not, they themselves have asked that they should not be worshipped. So that is uh, a, a great uh, thing that you, uh, we don't find uh, as such uh, in any part of the world, I, I presume, if I'm right to say that. Uh, yeah, then coming to Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the first Guru and founder of the Sikh uh, religion, the, the universal message which he gives, and that is the attributes of the creator. I've just given a gist of it because I really can't go into details of uh, the uh, religion, uh, details of it, but just uh, what we really learn from uh, this and why did Guru Nanak come up with this whole concept of universal uh, message, right? The, the times were such, the scenario was such that he uh, seeing around what was happening, the kind of rituals, the kind of impositions and all that uh, forced him to think on those lines that something is required which can be you know away from all this kind of suppressions and uh, superstitions and all those uh, aspects so that is how 
he puts forward uh, the attributes of the creator, he eliminate the five evils, calm, crowd, moh, lobe, ahankar, and that is what our dharma should be, which should originate from compassion. Equality of religious faith, human race and women, and then how to live your life is kirit karo, do, the, do your kar work, naam japo, speak, praise God, remember him, meditate upon him, and one chapu is something that you earn and you share your part of your earnings amongst the people who are needy or in charity. Uh, equality of duty towards society, a kind of a seva which you need to do, spiritual attainment in the household, you not leave your homes to uh, attain spirituality, being within the family and attaining. That is what is the whole uh, different perspective which Guru Nanak had, has put forward. And then the institution of Sangat and Pangat, which uh, gives us uh, a kind of a feeling of oneness and unity. When you sit uh, in the Pangat to have the Langar, right? And there is where, irrespective of caste, creed, religion, anyone can prepare the Langar, anyone can sit in the Pangat and have the uh, Langar. And you need to first sit in the Sangat and then have the Pangat. So uh, this is uh, what is the you know, basics uh, of uh, the ideas which uh, or values and the teachings which Guru Nanak uh, Ji put forwards and you can see or uh, all have seen how Langar is being served on a number of occasions uh, and how that whole uh, idea of uh, you know dis uh, indiscrimination comes in through the Langar pr uh, process. Coming to the next uh, aspect is Guru Gobind Singh Ji who founded the Khalsa Pant and uh, there's again a big uh, good story behind it that how this Khalsa Pant was uh, formed and who were these people from whom Guruji himself has taken the Amrit. You know, Amrit is prepared and that Amrit is being served to the Guru first and then the Guru uh, you know, uh, takes up the uh, name of the Khalsa, the Khalsa, the pure ones. And this Amrit is basically a nectar of immortality or Amrit is uh, from the Panch Pyara. That is when we are baptized, uh, this Amrit, uh, uh, Shakna, what we call it, or taking the Amrit, partaking the Amrit is where the Khalsa Pant. Now there is where he uh, thought of, yeah, there is uh, where uh, we were talking about the Amrit Shakna and the importance and significance of it and uh, uh, how these uh, Panch Pyaras uh, head always every kind of a procession where they have they are they are actually in the place of uh, those Panch Pyaras when we have given uh, whom, from whom the Gurus uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji had taken part in the uh, Amrit so that it is of that uh, uh, importance and that relevance yeah so here is what you can see the click once again. Uh, the five Ks, which are very, very important, uh, which a uh, Sikh has to adorn when they uh, take the Amrit. And you are a Sikh only if you have taken the Amrit, as well as you are adorning all this on your, uh, all these five Ks, like uncut hair. You need not cut your hair, rather tie up your hair. Uh, tie up your hair, the Kada, the steel bracelet which we uh, talk about and then the kanga is a wooden comb which is when you tie your hair and this comb uh, is to be uh, in your hair uh, is it is kept in your hair itself uh, the kacha is uh, the kind of a short uh, uh, underwear which is uh, basically a very free free style of a um, uh, uh, undergarment which is worn and uh, it is called as kacha or kashera and the kirpan is a small steel sword which is uh, worn in a kind of a strip or with the cloth stitched in it uh, and that is how it is to be kept. It is not to be kept in the pocket or any such thing. Uh, there is a proper way of adorning all these and they are to be uh, respected and they are not to be also removed uh, uh, at any point of time. Even there are rules uh, which you need to abide by when you uh, take a bath. How do you take care of all these? And there's the five takhats or the pilgrimage uh, centers of the six, uh, which we need to definitely visit in our lifetime. The Kaltakht, the Damdama Sahib Ji, 
and uh, Takhat Sri Harmandar Sahib, Takhat Sri Huzur Shah Sahib, and Takhat Sri Keshgarh Sahib. Every Takhat has its own relevance and importance, and uh, they are at uh, uh, the Akal Takshri, Akal Takshri, which is at Amritsar uh, near the in uh, Golden Complex, uh, Golden Temple Complex itself. Uh, this is the uh, highest uh, uh, body of the Sikh community from where all the uh, rules, regulations are laid down and people need to abide by this. So it is a kind of a, 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 an organization kind of a thing which people need to be connected to, bonded to, and they need to abide by. So all the orders which come for the Sikh community uh, in the form of appreciation as well as in the form of punishments, they are to be abided by the Sikh community. So that is, uh, and all others are also related with uh, the Sikh gurus and other aspects. The language uh, uh, and the script when we talk about uh, the Punjabi is basically the spoken language and the alphabets which you can see is the Gurmukhi uh, script uh, which the Guru Mukhi is basically from the mouth of the Guru as such. Uh, it was initiated by Guru Angad Dev Ji the second guru of the Sikhs and Gurmukhi was first you know uh, the actual uh, written work uh, where we find it recorded as such, it was in the six scriptures in 1604 when the um, fifth Guru Arjun Dev Ji also, uh, you know, we have the whole text uh, scriptures being written and installed, instituted at uh, the Golden Temple with the Bani or the words of the first five uh, Gurus. Uh, in Pakistan also the Punjabi language is uh, spoken, but it is written differently but spoken uh, uh, dialect is you uh, when you listen to them it is a Punjabi language but the, their script is different their script is different so they write that in the Shahamukhi uh, alphabet right uh, which is similar to the Urdu language alphabet but the spoken Punjabi is similar what is there in, uh, in uh, uh, our Punjab and in their Punjab the undivided India what we can uh, call it as uh, northwestern regions as such so here is the the script as just for your uh, knowledge. Now, Guru Nanak Dev Ji is Udasi. As I mentioned in the structure itself, that uh, uh, we will be looking at that how Guru Nanak Dev Ji and Guru Gobind Singh Ji are connected to Maharashtra and Mumbai. Because uh, when we talk about the Sikhs in Mumbai or Maharashtra, it's not only the migrants, right? It is uh, a long association of the uh, guru period that they had visited uh, these regions. So just a glimpse of that, uh, though there's a lot to talk about it, but then uh, uh, I cannot, I can just uh, 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 browse quickly as such. Now, Guru Nanak Dev Ji's Udasis. Udasis are basically the travelogues, you know, the travels. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji has traveled far and wide, you know, uh, uh, with the kind of lessons and the values and the teachings through different anecdotes by, wherever he visited in his four udasis which he had undertaken in different parts uh, of the country as well as the world that is it almost in all directions we can say all directions so all these earlier accounts of guru nanak's travels or udasis what we call them are uh, uh, written in by gurudas's war and the text and along with him were uh, Bala and Mardana, Bhai Bala and uh, Mardana, who were always accompanying him on all his uh, tours as such. So uh, during this period is where we have uh, Guru Nanak Ji has visited Maharashtra as well as uh, very close to us. Yes, please uh, go ahead. The basic purpose of the Udasis was basically to uh, talk to people, to tell the people that they should, uh, you know, be out of all this uh, e social evils which are there in the society, to be, you know, uh, uh, come out of all these rituals which are there, and what are the good values uh, 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 which you need to uh, learn and how you should earn your livelihood and all those kinds which through through small small anecdotes beautiful anecdotes are there uh, of guru nanak visiting different places and people meeting him and what were their learnings so the first udasi the period i have mentioned and it is to eastern india uh, right up to jagannath puri from punjab which i am not dealing in detail and these pictures i have taken from the sources i have mentioned uh, there uh, so there are four such udasis which Guru Nanak Dev Ji has, had undertaken. The second one is related to us, uh, that is to Maharashtra and uh, uh, the very region very near what we have to Mumbai is Nasik, Nanded and Nasik. 
the whole journey uh, is through the various places which i have mentioned you can see travel through nandev nasik uh, vijayawada guntur and all these various states going right up to sri lanka right and coming back from there and then moving towards gujarat and other uh, regions now in this whole thing that we are looking at is uh, his visit to uh, today bidar has been is a part of karnataka uh, and uh, some regions as today states divisions are uh, demarcated but uh, in the earlier uh, in, in that period it was not so so uh, we take it as these regions closer to maharashtra and the regions as because these were the later developments and a very uh, his very visit to nanded also uh, so uh, so from punjab another picture which can give you an idea about he traveling from north the green line uh, downwards which you can see towards the south right up to uh, the region and uh, ceylon also anuradhapura and all other regions gang uh, uh, chittagong and uh, dhaka all these and uh, dhaka again you have a very old uh, also uh, scriptures which are there which i had personally visited that place uh, guru nanak's uh, uh, this uh, grants which we get to see there also they have uh, maintained which is a very old one so this journey of guru nanak gets connected to uh, us through this uh, particular Uh, udasis wherein he has visited the place where we have in nasik uh, uh, where the panchwati uh, region is uh, uh, in the panchwati region where we we have the story of the ramayan and uh, that that is what uh, he was very much uh, staying there for some time and he stayed at nagpur for a few months and from nagpur he visited amravati akola and all these different different places uh where uh, along with his uh, bala mardana and his followers those who wish to follow him but then not to too long a journey that people uh, did follow him but they definitely used to come to listen to his uh, uh his words and his uh, not sermons exactly but yes some kind of learnings from there so uh, and then he also visited uh, one of the very important place uh, that was Uh, the narsi bamni that is the birthplace of uh, sant namdev uh, one of the greatest uh, saint of maharashtra and uh, he was uh, very much uh, uh, impressed by the looking at the uh, works of uh, um, uh, namdev ji so that was what uh, was where uh, we connect uh, namdev ji to our uh, uh, sikh religion because lots of his hymns are a part of abangas are part of our uh, uh, shri guru granth sahib so uh, that is how we connect uh, guru nanak dev ji and maharashtra and we have other two uh, saints also who are whose writings have been included in our shri guru granth sahib so uh, these are the connections which uh, we can derive derive from the uh, uh, guru nanak's uh, travels as such and in nanded and Uh, other places now there i have just uh, found one reference which i am not very sure about because i uh, i've just that's why this uh, bold uh, written in bold as such uh, there was something this uh, written by surinder singh kohli also but uh, there is no other authentic source to corroborate that guru nanak ji has vis visited this ambarnath shiv temple because we really do not have uh, this reference in our uh, uh writings of the udasis now this uh, i have just put it for uh, people to you know those who are uh, interested can go further with the research in this area but i have tried my best to see but i am not able to get this uh, information because if definitely there is something uh, in ambarnath uh, it's very very close to mumbai so there should have been some kind of uh, uh, you know further developments in that region as we have in other places as such like in bidar we have uh guru nanak dev ji is uh, gurudwara and the whole story which goes with that yes now this is the third udasi which we are not again going into detail so you have all the himachal region and right up to sikkim and tibet and uh, other regions lay and all where guru ji had uh, traveled to this particular region next yeah this is the fourth udasi which uh, Uh, where uh, guru ji had traveled to westward far away to the islamic lands and we have stories of makka madina uh, and uh, kabul and kandar and all those regions uh, anecdotes of those regions also another connection which uh, we have come across or which is on the records also uh, in the government records of uh, punjab uh, 
about Maharani Jind Kaur, who was one, the youngest wife of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, who died in uh, 1863 uh, in uh, UK, and uh, her son wanted because that was the last wish that he, she should be cream, cremated and her samadhi should be very near to her uh, beloved husband, Maharaja Ranjit Singh. But uh, uh, it was that cremations were banned in UK during that time, the, that particular time. So he was asked to take the uh, uh, body to, uh, to India and but not to Punjab they were they were insisting that he should not take it to Punjab because the situation at that time in Punjab uh, uh, you know kingdom it was uh, uh, taken over by the Britishers and there was a lot of and she was uh, very much uh, loved by the uh, people uh, of Punjab the big huge kingdom which Maharaja Ranjit Singh had founded and a very popular ruler of the times so uh, they feared Britishers feared that it may lead to some kind of problems so they didn't wanted him to uh, take her to take the body to Punjab but but rather cremated somewhere uh, uh, at the coast or nearby so they suggested that her body be taken to Bombay and from Bombay they plan to take it to uh, Nasik and there is where they cremated uh, the body and uh, they say that uh, the ashes were uh, buried and a memorial uh, was there uh, for some time there is another difference of opinion over it uh, though there is one of the pictures provided by Praveen Asavle, which actually I have not uh, visited this place. Uh, but I just uh, saw this uh, and at Panchwati uh, Nasik, this uh, uh, monument is there, right? Uh, that is what is mentioned by him, but uh, I, I have actually not seen it. But they say that for quite some time, the remains of uh, Rani Jinda were there. Uh, in uh, this particular uh, place, this region, un until uh, their granddaughter, uh, her granddaughter, Princess Bamba Sophia, took the uh, remains and went and uh, uh, you know created a memorial near her, near Maharaja Ranjit Singh's uh, memorial at Lahore. So this is a piece of information where we connect the six, though it is not that they were staying here also, just the connections which I'm just trying to bring out. Then we come to Guru Gobind Singh's uh, connection with Maharashtra. You can see the travel of Guru Gobind Singh uh, with all the uh, fights of, uh, with the Mughals, struggling uh, Mughals and uh, the way, great wars which Guru, Guru Gobind Singh had fought. And then uh, while he was uh, moving around, uh, it was uh, Bahadur Shah, uh, Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah who invited uh, Guruji to accompany him for uh, to fight against on, or on his campaign against uh, uh, the Nizam. So it was in that connection that uh, Guruji uh, came towards uh, the uh, Western India, particularly towards uh, the Nanded region, and he stationed at Nanded. Uh, so he stayed at uh, Nanded, and from there is where uh, he, the Sikhs were ordered to believe, uh, and there is where uh, we talk about the living Guru uh, being uh, bestowed, the Granth Sahib being bestowed the. Uh, living guru status and uh, no human to be worshipped as guru. That is what happened here. Uh, this is the gra grand and great day uh, for the Sikhs as such. And uh, uh, here is where Gu Guruji also met uh, Madho Das Bairagi who uh, belonged to the region of Jammu Kashmir and uh, he met him here in this region and in all the talks and discussions and so on because Guru, Dan Guru Gobind Singh he also traveled throughout Nande different different places where he went and you have many Gurdwaras in Nande in the memory of Guru Gobind Singh and the people where when he instituted this uh, uh, the Guru Granth Sahib as the uh, living Guru and the uh, a proper place uh, which was uh, where the Gurdwara stands today so uh, that is very, very important where the followers of Guru Gobind Singh Ji or the people of this particular region uh, embraced uh, uh, Sikhism, uh, got converted to Sikhism and they are the people who carried forward this legacy of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. So if you visit Nanded, it is one of the worth visiting uh, site and place, a uh, religious place of the Sikhs and uh, you will see that uh, uh, everything is being managed by the local people of that particular region. So 
there are many uh, stories, many fact factuals uh, which have uh, taken place uh, while Guru Gobind Singh was there and. Uh, also, they say that, as I mentioned uh, about Madhura Bairagi, then Guru Gobind Singh Ji uh, baptized him uh, into uh, Sikhism and named him as Banda Bahadur. And he was given the further responsibility of going back to Punjab and counter the further uh, any kind of uh, uh, struggles or any kind of oppressions uh, taking place there or liberate also uh, the soil from the Mughals liberate the land from the Mughals. So that is how Banda Bahadur uh, took up this for the responsibility and Nanded remains as uh, where uh, Guruji breathed his last at Nanded. And uh, the, uh, many Gurdwaras are built in the memory of Guru Gobind Singh. So we have lots of uh, again history behind all these Gurudwaras which Guru Gobind Singh Ji, uh, places which he visited and the uh, Gurdwaras which are built there. So uh, the, uh, these were the uh, uh, connections of the Sikh uh, uh, with uh, in connection with the Sikh uh, gurus and uh, leaving behind the community, the new community, new uh, uh, new Sikhs uh, which were uh, in the Nanded region, which got converted to Sikhism and took up this particular embrace this religion. Coming to now the demography of Maharashtra which uh, I'm not going into much detail, but you can see the census reports which uh, talk about that uh, the Sikhs settled in all these regions of Maharashtra. It's not only Mumbai, but all regions of Maharashtra and very few in Mumbai, very few. So uh, if you go further uh, to the regions uh, when uh, Sikhs became or came to be uh, uh, establishing themselves here, it was basically after the partition uh, it was. But there are still some references uh, which I need to bring out that before partition, when did the Sikhs come to uh, uh, Mumbai? And majority of the Sikhs who, who migrated to Mumbai were basically uh, in search of uh, jobs and uh, a lot of other reasons as such, right? So uh, let's go ahead. Yeah, the Khandesh district has been mentioned as having 16 taluka. This is talking about just the figures of the uh, proper six, which we get from the census, just 21 males and 19 females. You can see the number is miniculous and uh, miniscule. And the other three talukas talk about the other few uh, 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 members of the Sikh community. And the census report of 1881 being not available, the statistics of the Sikh population, and therefore it was not possible to have them. And then further 91, you can see the Bombay presidency having 98 Sikhs, including uh, 89 males and nine females. So this is thus the uh, census which provides this kind of an information. The figures, yes, go ahead, please. Paruk, please, ahead. Yeah, 1901 census, religion-wise population of Bombay Presidency, where we have Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, and Christians, and Sikh being just 1502. You can see the number, and then 71 to 91 is the, the this, this is just an uh, analysis of it. So we just look at the 1901 uh, census, uh, religion-wise population, and the number uh, 1502 in the Bombay Presidency and Bombay District. You'll find 1051 and only 88 in the Bombay city as such. Now exactly these 88, where they were stationed, where uh, exactly they were housed or where they had their own houses, that is really not uh, uh, traceable as such. So uh, next page, please. Yeah, uh, so 1921 census had some kind of discrepancies in collection uh, of the religion-wise data uh, because over a period of time, what happened was uh, the census people were not able to differentiate between Sikhs and the Punjabis as such. So there was also their difficulty which uh, they came across. So uh, the 21 provinces, the total number of the British district was 3312 and city of Mumbai. There were only 10 Sikhs in 21. Now where what happened to those uh, 88 Sikhs were, uh, were there earlier. So probably what we understand is that they were the people who came here, stayed here for some time and went further ahead to other regions. And some of them uh, in 1910-11 uh, somewhere, uh, they were uh, moving ahead to uh, some parts of Africa where the labor was required and where you have uh, the railway tracks being laid down there. So the Britishers used to uh, source them from uh, a year. So from Punjab, they used to come to Bombay. 
and that is how probably ten, they were staying here for tentative reason and that is how when the census are uh, collected you know there were uh, in 31 what you have is 985 in the uh, city bombay city as such so yeah yeah can we go ahead yes so census 12 to 2011 uh, talks about the Mumbai city religion wise and that you have you see just it is 0. Uh, 0. 0.49 so just 0. 0.5 percent of the six in the city of Mumbai and uh, Maharashtra is what you can see again it is very much negligible as such to be uh, counted as such but yes this small number has contributed to a greater extent as Guru Gobind Singh Ji rightly said uh, um, it is the, the statement which he says that one Sikh is equal to Sava Lakh. So it's like 1.25 1, 1 lakhs as we say. So one Sikh is equal to that. So your contribution should be such immense that uh, one Sikh is enough to either destroy the Sava Lakh uh, enemy also. So that is how I just uh, take it in that particular stride. Yes. Next please. Yeah, coming to the early six in Mumbai. So before partition, if we can just have a glimpse of this, uh, six before partition came from uh, Punjab. Majorly, uh, these were uh, the comprising of the Ramgadias, a few Jats and other castes. These are some of the uh, castes of the um, uh, Sikh community, which I will again talk about it. That why caste, which should not be there as per the Sikh religion, but they were known as uh, since uh, the earlier times. So they particularly settled in the Goribandar region and the Kulaba region. So this is how when, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that they came and they just uh, stayed for some time and there were some rooms which were taken for them uh, by some Sikhs who were staying in Bombay and then they moved ahead and some went uh, to other places, as I mentioned, then right up to Kalyan. So they all initially worked on daily wages and they later started their small businesses and some went throughout uh, Maharashtra and then some uh, stayed here, some went ahead uh, to Africa and so on. Uh, so Sikhs and Punjabis migrated from other parts of India. When I say Calcutta, Prithviraj Kapoor family and all, uh, there were Sikhs who were already there in uh, uh, in Bombay who had come even before partition. And uh, though Prithviraj Kapoor also belonged to the uh, to that. Uh, uh, that Punjab which today is in Pakistan. So they migrated even before uh, partition and they came and settled in other regions because Calcutta at that time was one of the major center of this film industry as such. And then it uh, moved toward, that is how these uh, people started moving towards Mumbai and that is how we have the uh, Mumbai film industry uh, evolving. So uh, this is one thing and many of them located themselves at the Punjabi Gali. If uh, you know where Khalsa College is located, just behind it, uh, you are uh, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, on the on its right hand side, you have uh, the VJTI and just behind the VJTI, you have the Pai Garden. So that is one lane over there, which is which became popular as a Punjabi Gali because large number of these uh, uh, film actors Right, uh, they started uh, staying there, particularly Prithviraj's family. So they started staying there. So all these uh, were the early migrants, even before uh, part, uh, partitions as such. And then you have one of the very famous transporters, Singh transporters, uh, B.S. Dodi, who uh, came to Bombay and then they started their. Uh, uh, that is how they. Uh, started with this whole transport business in Mumbai and B.S. Dodi uh, is uh, staying at, uh, I don't know right now whether he's alive, but because I had uh, met his son, M.S. Dodi, who was uh, our student, ex-student of Khalsa, and they stayed uh, just, uh, just opposite to CCI. So many of these six were also at that time part of the freedom movement, the Quit India movement which was going on, the Neville mutiny which took place and at that time the uh, International Army Relief Fund which was being there. So their family, this woman, uh, yes, someone is saying that he passed away, yes, uh, uh, probably, right. So uh, 
that is uh, uh, the relief fund where these women of these uh, transporters and other families came together and started collecting some money for uh, providing this relief fund to those uh, case uh, the INA case which were going on so some kind of relief fund finances to be supported right? so in this way uh, you have uh, these uh, people being a part even before partition then you, this Dodi family as I just mentioned then you have uh, Sardar Pratap Singh uh, everyone uh, in Bombay actually knows uh, today in present time Master uh, uh, Sadar Tara Singh who recently uh, passed away. Uh, he, he also one of the very very famous uh, or very very good I should say uh, the uh, person in politics who has done a lot for his particular region which everyone knows I need not go into details but uh, that is what this family uh, Tara Singh also belonged to. So Pratap Singh again very important person which I'll speak little ahead. And then you have Sardar Sohan Singh Kohli, who was MLA and the corporator who came to Bombay in 96, again from Pakistan. Now, this is not partition Pakistan. This is uh, like some people started moving even before that because they, there was the business which was also happening right from, uh, uh, la, uh, what to say, uh, the Sindh region and the Bombay port. You know, these were the port, the coastal region, which was a lot of trade was happening, a lot of business was happening. So many people came from other regions uh, also. Yes, sir, coming to Dr. Ambedkar. Yes, sir. That is after, uh, I'm not being next, yes. Yes, Mohan Singh of Shere Punjab also, very right. So you have, there is a long list, which I cannot name everyone, but some of them I've just put up. Avtar Singh Bedi, who came to Bombay in uh, 1935 for job prospects. And there you can see that uh, he worked at uh, the Bombay Khalsa Hotel and then uh, also uh, the Shere Punjab, what you uh, have is uh, named uh, the hotel which they named as Shere Punjab. We have Manmohan Singh Bedi, uh, MS Bedi again, who was the ex-mayor, who was the mayor of uh, Bombay for from 80 to 83, uh, one year what we have always. And he was a corporator of the Bori Bandar constituency, a spokesperson of the Congress party and the BPCC Bombay uh, Pradesh Congress Committee Executive Committee for 15 years and the General Secretary. So all these people who have been in politics also have been a great support to the uh, 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 Sikh community who were uh, just coming up during that particular time. Then you have Sadat M.S. Sahani who came to Bombay in 1938 who started his uh, business uh, with one truck and then added many uh, which were hired by the defense services at Kolaba in 1949 to 52. He purchased the uh, queries at Chandivili and Kandivili, and that is how uh, this uh, again he became the president of Lorry Owners Association. So they have started growing basically when they came here, and that is what you can see how enterprising they were, that what kinds of jobs they took up, and how immediately they uh, uh, you know rise up to that again, again helping the uh, society as well. Then you have Sadar Gariwal uh, Singh, sir, who was the director of the sports, who had uh, also an awardee of the Dad Dadoji uh, Kondev Award, right? And uh, he has uh, contributed a lot to uh, Guru Nanak uh, College, which I'll talk about, and Guru Nanak Khalsa College, uh, which I'll talk about further. Yes, uh, there is one, this mention I need to, I felt like uh, talking about it because it is again connected to Bombay. Uh, there was this Ramgadia uh, 6, Ramgadia Association, you know, these, these are the uh, communities as such. Like uh, uh, when we talk about other uh, caste and communities, so Ramgadia again 6 are, and uh, they migrated to Bombay 1910-11 in search of employment. You can see how early they came. And at that time, this associ they formed their own association, very few of people they were. And uh, this association hired the rooms at the Freer Road, just opposite that uh, GPO, uh, for, uh, you know, th for helping those people who are coming from Punjab or any other part of the country, if they need some kind of uh, shelter and some kind of food. So that is how they used to uh, provide them this kind of uh, help. And uh, more Sikhs poured in during and after the First World War, where what we have is uh, who were uh, helped by this association. Now, the association uh, was managed by prominent Sikhs like Salar Sat, Sat Singh, uh, Manku and Maha Singh, and you have Mit Singh and others. And this association uh, provide a lot of assistance to the economically poor Sikh people. Uh, they spent about 35,000 of rupees in constructing a hall with uh, about eight rooms at Mumbai, as I mentioned, just near that place, and which was a great support for those people 
who uh, were uh, on their journey towards uh, Africa for employment during the British period, the uh, railway lines, as I mentioned, which were there. They, so they were appointed to be uh, worked uh, as laborers uh, there. So they, uh, that is how they, this was a great support by this Rambadia Association, which was uh, set up in 1910-11. Yeah, and there's a long list of uh, the film industry people, which I'm not going much into detail. Yes, sir. Somebody asked about Dr. Uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar. So I'm coming here to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Uh, before partition, how Ambedkar got connected to the six, as we all know that uh, Dr. Ambedkar was, uh, or the, through that resolution which they passed, they had uh, they, uh, announced that uh, there is a need to embrace uh, some other religion that would provide them equality as well as uh, treat them as equal and free human beings. So in that connection, we know that uh, Baba Sahib was looking towards all the religions. He's, uh, he was studying all the religions, trying to understand them, that which religion can uh, provide them uh, that kind of uh, equal status. And in this way, uh, they will have their uh, identity too. Uh, so the Sikh community, uh, all the other communities, religious communities contacted uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar and the Sikh community also expressed their interest in Ambedkar's declaration that uh, further led to the extending the communication between them. So a committee of three Sikh leaders visited Bombay and Pune in 1936, where they arranged uh, divans and langars and a uh, large number of followers of Dr. Ambedkar were quite impressed looking at this whole uh, uh, system of the divans and the langars, uh, which they felt that there is uh, so much of equality that Anybody can take part in langar, anybody can sit uh, when whoever is sitting next to you, do not know, you don't ask and everyone is served the same food and the, with the same respect. And also for preparing the food, also the langar, anybody, anybody can be a part of it. So that was something which uh, very much, uh, uh, I assume, uh, uh, impressed these uh, followers of uh, uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Uh, those who attended these and there were small small pamphlets which were also uh, written down in Punjabi and then in uh, that is in, uh, in the Punjabi language and then they were translated into Marathi for the people to understand that. So probably those uh, things also gave them an insight into the uh, uh, religious activities and the uh, Sikh community as such. And in this connection is where that Dr. Uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar visited uh, Amritsar to meet the Sikh leadership and to understand the religion further and have a kind of a interaction as to what can be done if they wish to embrace Sikhism. So he put forth with, with all the discussions, uh, uh, you, uh, lots of other things were discussed. Uh, all those things are mentioned in the resolutions of the uh, meetings which were which are uh, there as records. So he put, uh, mainly he put forth two important demands uh, before the Sikh mission and uh, firstly was to start uh, a college for the depressed classes in uh, Bombay, in Mumbai and secondly to set up a printing press for his newspaper uh, Janta which they used to publish from Kamatipura in uh, those days. So they, uh, they, they, these two needs what he uh, also expressed along with all other things which he asked was uh, uh, there is also a mention of that, is it necessary to keep the Kirpan and uh, will, what can your Sikh community do for the repressed classes? You know, all these kinds of dis uh, questions, queries or an interaction uh, ca came up in the interaction. So he was quite convinced to, to a greater extent, to that extent that he sent around, if I'm not mistaken, around 13 people from Maharashtra uh, to uh, Punjab uh, to stay at Amritsar and to study the religion basically and in that one there was one of his uh, relative one of his uh, nephew uh, I suppose I'm not remembering right now but yes so these people were stationed there and they studied this uh, religion tried to understand it and also a few of them uh, express the intention of getting converted to the religion after understanding the things. So that message came to the communication which happened between them and Ambedkar uh, are also uh, sources uh, are there. So it's an uh, open, uh, uh, open source as such, it's open content. Yes, so the Sikh mission is there where agreed to establish the Sikh institution in Bombay as it also goes very well with the Sikh principles of uplifting the downtrodden and the service to humanity. So it was also a willingness of the Sikh uh, 
leaders and the community people that uh, they, yes, uh, this is what our gurus also wished and we need to uh, do the service to humanity and that is how they uh, moved ahead. Now, thus, in this way, the whole process of initiating first began with the establishment of uh, Guru Nanak Khalsa College. Uh, in that discussion, uh, uh, Dr. Ambedkar also asked the six that uh, uh, whether they will they will really be getting equal status and whether they will be having a separate electorate. So to get these answers, legal answers to this, uh, uh, Ambedkar uh, wanted to go uh, on a tour to uh, London and also other parts of the world. Uh, and so he, uh, it was in that whole process that the Sikh mission granted uh, finances to his uh, this tour to London and other parts uh, in Italy and in uh, Rome. And uh, he wanted to take the legal advice from the uh, uh, British legal advisors as such that whether they will be having, they can have a separate electorate. So that was a big question as such what he had in mind. And while this on this journey, what he did was because already the six had agreed to uh, set up an education institution for higher studies in uh, Bombay. So he also looked at the uh, structures at uh, uh, different uh, plazas in uh, Italy and other uh, um, countries which he traveled, uh, looking at uh, uh, what kind of uh, building he can have. So he also contacted a number of uh, architects over there. He indirectly in one way prepared a kind of a blueprint which he brought back to uh, Mumbai. And that is how the whole story goes ahead. Though at that point uh, when he came back, he was a little bit uh, uh, driven away from his decision of embracing uh, Sikhism. Now uh, reasons well known to him definitely, but uh, uh, there are difference of opinion over it. There are certain sources which openly talk about it. Uh, which uh, definitely I'm not going to discuss that uh, in detail. But uh, the outcome of this uh, whole thing, which I would like to appreciate, is that uh, they came up with uh, setting up of an education institution in Mumbai. Uh, yeah, and that is how the six uh, uh, that is how the six uh, made their presence felt uh, outside Punjab, and for them also it was a great opportunity to you know uh, do a service to society. Not only that, but moving out of their own um, state of uh, Punjab, of their own region and uh, and spreading their, see, automatically it happened that uh, it's a Sikh uh, uh, religion or a community coming up with this particular institution. So the language will come, the religion will come and uh, lots of other cultural aspects also are related to that. So this was a great opportunity for the Sikhs also, which they uh, uh, also uh, felt happy about it that this community, uh, if uh, and, uh, embraced uh, religion, the more further uh, relations can go ahead. But then again, as I said, uh, for reasons known to the Sikh leaders and to the uh, Sikh community, the uh, leaders as well as Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar and his close associate. So there are many versions to it, which I, need, I am not going to talk over here, but ultimately both uh, the leaders of the Sikhs as well as uh, from Ambedkar's side, it was uh, uh, decided that they are not going ahead with this conversion. But they were definitely going ahead with establishment of this institution. And that is why, where we, where Khal, Guru Nanak Khalsa College stands today, built in 1937. So that was a response to uh, Ambedkar's communication with the Sikh leaders. And uh, the money uh, part of it, the purchase of the land and so on, the Sikhs had authorized Dr. Ambedkar to do all the dealings on their behalf, the authority letters given to him and the funding coming from the first purchase of the land. Now that time Baba Sahib Ambedkar was very uh, influential in the whole government setup over here. And therefore uh, uh, he, was, he had that knowledge of uh, the lands being available uh, where and how that can be. So the whole application process which was to be done was done by Dr. Uh, B.R. Ambedkar where his signature still is there on the application form uh, which is available in the uh, in the uh, municipal uh, government uh, archives. So uh, uh, just uh, also one very important thing to mention here is uh, the first amount of that money for the purchase of the land. Right? I'm not going into the details of how much and square feet and all that. But that money which from where it came is very important. If you can see the picture over here, uh, Gurdwara Sri Nankana Sahib, 
yes it is in uh, pakistan uh, and this gurdwara uh, you know every uh, temple you have uh, people offering money and offering uh, lots of things so that is called as chadhava in punjabi uh, in in a gurdwara when you offer money uh, before uh, uh, before the bow down you bow down and you take the blessing of the god so you offer something even if you don't offer you get the blessing that there is no question about it but the money which was given for the purchase of the land had come from the birthplace of guru nanak the gurudwara from the offerings which were there at the gurudwara so that is how the uh, also the name uh, guru nanak khalsa college uh, uh, comes ahead that is what we assume though it is not uh, written down but it is that is how uh, we go by that and here you can see the pictures of uh, guru nanak khalsa college and on the right hand side if you can see one uh, uh, cover page of one book genesis and growth of guru nanak khalsa college from 1937 first 25 years of history uh, has been written in this and uh, this will give you more details about the communication which happened between them and how uh, also the sikh uh, uh, people from punjab were invited to take up jobs in uh, the uh, college as such to be appointed as a teacher and so on so you have uh, these kinds of references you will find that how the community had contributed in the field of education with the aim of uh, providing higher education to the depressed classes for their upliftment the advertisements were given Uh, at that time uh, in the marathi newspapers in all the newspapers that admissions for specific admissions for the uh, depressed classes will be given at khalsa college and so on so all those details you can get in this books if anyone interested can uh, visit the library and can definitely read the book yes so that was about guru nanak khalsa college and there are uh, many uh, you know uh, gradually uh, many people getting associated with it and the management committees and the trust and further uh, just to mention here that uh, uh, dr ambedkar when he brought the uh, just uh, just a few lines on that further uh, to add that when he brought the a blueprint from uh, it was a roman gothic style of architecture which you can see of khalsa college and here is where uh, they appointed uh, mr patankar as the architect to further do all the paperwork and uh, with the application and all as the technical things to be looked at and when you really look at the institution i would uh, request everyone to visit khalsa college to see the architecture of khalsa college it's beautiful roman gothic style of architecture Uh, i do have the pictures but i don't think i may have time to show all those but fine but you are all, all are most welcome for that uh, next we come to the another uh, very uh, uh, just one slide before please yeah the, the guru nanak vidyak society is another uh, society where sardar pratap singh which i mentioned earlier was a founding member of this society and uh, Uh, this was again in 1947 it was before uh, partition what it was uh, already a school or a, a body which came together and they set up today it has uh, more than 30 schools and a few colleges bed as uh, bed and all those uh, but then prominent uh, six who have contributed to this gurunanak vidyak society and sardar pratap singh has contributed his appreciation money which he was uh, given by uh, prime minister uh, 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 that time lal by lal bahadur uh, shastri ji for his services uh, uh, to the society so whatever he ha he had that uh, uh, with him it though uh, uh, it is a later this but uh, his services to the society what he gave was in this form of donation which he gave to the uh, gurunanak vidyak society to start the gurunanak technical school uh, in the beginning year at uh, koliwada which you know the the place Uh, yeah now we come to the partition migrants uh, the six and the sindhi refugees disembarking at bombay which you can see the pictures around 700 refugees who were transported uh, from the uh, uh, port uh, who landed up in uh, bombay and uh, they were taken from the port there uh, they came by steamers uh, from sindh and while they came from sindh uh, even uh, there is a mention about uh, pratap singh having good connections with the people at uh, sindh and lahore uh, who helped the uh, people uh, nearly uh, they say that thousands of them were helped by pratap singh to uh, 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 take the ships and come down to this uh, or on this journey of uh, reaching bombay 
and some of them on the way got down at uh, some other ports which came in of Gujarat and others. So and some of them landed in uh, Mumbai because there was already already a kind of uh, trade connections and business connections which were there earlier. But only thing is they couldn't carry their a lot of things along with them because of the situation, right? And there is where you see the trucks from the ports. They are taken to the trucks. And these trucks were, uh, you know, of the Dodi transporters or Singh transporters, what they were popularly known as. So a lot of contribution of uh, the those six who were there already in the city, and they have provided a lot of uh, support. And these Sikh refugees were brought to Khalsa College first. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, if, uh, even during uh, Second World War, when these uh, small small barracks were built. You know, uh, even at Khalsa College at the ground floor, we had some barracks where rationing and everything was stored. And from Khalsa College, what you have right crossing that Chanmukhanand Hall Road, uh, the whole of uh, the Gandhi Market, what you know today, moving ahead. Uh, and today, what you have, uh, the Kulivara, all these were the barracks, the uh, temporary barracks, which were laid down uh, at that time. And these barracks were used for, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving refuge at that temporary uh, refuge, which was given to the... Uh, to the uh, refugees who came at that time. So first they were brought to Khalsa College in the college hall. They were provided with, uh, they stayed there for three, four days and they were provided with food and a shelter. And from there, some of them were taken in trucks to uh, towards uh, Ulasnagar and Virar and other regions, wherever the government had these refugee camps, which they had uh, made. So they were shifted in this particular manner from one place to the uh, other, but with full, uh, uh, protection and the kind of uh, uh, requirements which they uh, needed were served. Yeah, the rehabilitation centers at Kuliwada, Chembur, Ulasnagar, and all these places had barracks, as I just mentioned. And then uh, is what uh, you know. These are well, these are communities which are well knit community. You know, like the Arora community, the Khatris, the Bambas, and all, particularly belonging to a particular region. And then like Multan, Peshawar, and uh, so on. So you have this. Dhanpotwar at uh, Khar Santa Cruz, if anyone knows about it. So there also you have all this Potiar uh, uh, commun uh, community, Sikh community. So they were business communities and they were in their own uh, groups as such, which they tried to settle down. Next. Yes, so refugee settlements today is what you can see. The situation is very bad at all this uh, Kulivadas. Uh, where rehabilitation, uh, sorry, re, uh, redevelopment processes have started and uh, lots of issues are there. The situation and condition is very, very bad. So they are declaring some of these uh, settlements uh, as that they may uh, collapse at any point of time. And uh, the small lanes and gullies which are there in Kolivada, also in Chembur and other regions also. So this is a recent, uh, I think two years back, some in 2019, uh, 18 something, they started with this whole thing. And people are not moving out of this particular places. Now, uh, a few interviews which I had conducted with these people of, uh, yeah, please go ahead, with this people of uh, Kolivada region uh, is, uh, I, as we know that some of them uh, were taxi drivers, some of them started their small, uh, small, small uh, labor work and so on. So they were known for taxi drivers and all, all that technical work. One of the person who was the first kind of a person who uh, and the only person who had the knowledge of uh, repairing the uh, taxis as such, you know, from amongst them. So he was the one who used to give the technical knowledge. Uh, Mr. Thapar, uh, he was uh, the senior Thapar who stays very near to us. So uh, an interview which I conducted, so that was what he was telling. So he said throughout the day I should, uh, uh, yeah, throughout the day uh, we used to do this taxi work and in the uh, uh, after, after evening we used to go and sell the cloth uh, which they used to get from Bhagwanda's market, you know, the, the pieces of cloth and they used to go and stand near or uh, sit near uh, Matunga station, that whole road of Matunga. Uh, they used to sit there and sell those kinds. So there are lots of stories, but uh, they, there are, uh, they are issued some kind of letters, some kind of cards, some kind of documents, which where they own these places. So those kinds of things is what they don't want to share with. But they do share their experiences, how they have come up to this particular day today. And very near to this uh, Kulivada, uh, you have many Gurdwaras in Kulivada also. The Shmesh Gurdwara and others, there are pictures of it. And then uh, uh, this Kulivada station was uh, renamed in 1979 as Guru Tegh Bahadur Nagar on this 
uh, 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 anniversary of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. But then this is uh, what the session uh, pictures which I put up where they conduct uh, also uh, Kirtans and because it is that region which is where, where they have uh, settled and they owe a lot to the uh, Sikh religion and that is how they have come forward for this. Next. Yes. So we can just uh, quickly scroll. These are again prominent Sikh uh, Pratap Singh's contribution. Go further. Yeah, some of the Gurdwaras, just pictures, just pictures. Oldest Gurdwara at Boribandar, yes. This is the, this one is also very interesting, Kash Ghat. Here the railways used to keep their cash, you know, in security. So there the Gurdwara and few of the families are staying there at Baikala, which is there now also. Yes, even the Shere Punjab Gurdwara is there now also. Sain Poluvada Gurdwara, Dashmesh Gurdwara, yes. Then business, this is a long list of all the business associations and companies. Uh, of Bombay and Maharashtra, you can just have a look at it. The Taximans Union, Transporters, the Parmars, and uh, all others, you know, all connected. Various hotel chain of hotels, Resham Motors, Bharti Motors. These are all the people who have contributed to this, uh, also the economy of Mumbai, I would say, by this uh, particular. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, Guru Nanak Hospital again has come up. It has come up very late, but then, yes, that is another contribution of uh, Guru Nanak. Uh, uh, the Sikh community, yes, and even today in this COVID time, they are uh, helping a lot. You have social cultural associations in Bombay, like the Punjab Association, World Punjabi Association. You have the cultural uh, association, heritage boards, which are there, which work towards the society and all celebrations, all festivals, and even educating the uh, the youth and even the children, giving them the uh, besides the families giving religious education, they also conduct a number of such kind of things, even tree plantations and so on, all these uh, social cultural uh, activities which are done by them. Yes. Further. Yeah, this is again the pictures where they are located and definitely you all have experienced this, how the community rises to the occasions a number of times, need not be talked about. The less we talk about the service we do, the less uh, God the blessed us with more such kind of activities. The Khalsa aid and Sri Guru Singh Sabha Gurdwara, Dadar and all other Gurdwaras, none of them are behind. Yes, the Chief Khalsa Divan again doing a lot of uh, work. Yes, further. The Sababan Punjabi Association again at Andheri. Further. Khalsa aid as I just mentioned. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And then some terms which I have just tried to for your uh, knowledge. Uh, that what what do these terms mean? Yes, if some I had questions on that, so here is where your questions may be answered. So Satsya Kal, way of greeting, and Vai Guru Jida Khalsa, Vai Guru Jidi Fateh. It's traditional way of greeting. You can see in the picture a small child greeting the uh, senior people, whoever whomever you greet. So it has to be in that way. And Jobole Sone Hal, Satsya Kal, one who utters is the name of the Almighty, is always uh, happy. Yes, further. Then the tra traditions and so on. You can go further. These are all the uh, institution. Yes, the uh, uh, Khan part, the Kala Prashad, the Prasad which you get at the Gurdwara, the birth naming, birth ceremony, marriage ceremony. I'll tell you a little further. I just for some pictures are there. And then the culture, you know, folk dance, which everyone is well versed with. You can see the attire and everything further. They are happy occasions. Giddha is called the Punjabi female dance. Giddha they perform on all happy occasions. And you can see the attire with all the jewelry and all the things. Yes, colorful, very vibrant. Yeah, this is the uh, dress of the bride. You can see uh, the, uh, uh, the bangles which you can see is called as Chuda and the Punjabi suit which is there. And the Kalire. Kalire is something which is hanging from her hands if you can see that. I cannot uh, take the cursor there, but uh, something which is uh, she's showing as hanging. They are called as Kaliras and the uh, Chuda. Uh, Chuda are the bangles. These are typical types of bangles which are worn at the time of the marriage. And that is also again uh, given by the mamas, the girl's uh, mama. Yes, further. Yeah, this is how the girl is brought to the uh, Gurudwara with that full kari over her. Further. This is a Sangeet and all, which is very common in the films and all. You uh, do enjoy all this. Yes, further. Yeah, Mehendi and uh, Sangeet are very common and very popular in the uh, 
uh, film. Yes, and this is uh, one uh, uh, event which we do before the um, on the night before the marriage. It is called as Jago. It is like you have that uh, lamp lit and uh, all the girls and all the family members enjoying taking to each family's uh, house and uh, just in, it's a fun and entertainment. So it's called a Jago. So there are lots of songs, folk songs which are connected to this uh, Jago. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this is how it's all, it's all dance and all those things. Jago, yes. Here is the marriage ceremony, the, which is called as a, a Anand Karaj or Lama Vati. Lama is to move around, you know. Anand Karaj is the actual word uh, of the ceremony, and uh, which was, uh, as mentioned, introduced by Guru Amar Das Ji. And uh, it is a blissful ceremony. And you can see the first thing is that you have to bow down before the gurus, and uh, then you have to go around that. So the four, four uh, verses are. Uh, read out and after every verse you have to stand up bow down move take a round of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib because that is your Guru that is your God and then come and sit and again bow down and again the second verse will be read in this way four verses are read and that is how uh, hardly it takes I, I would say 10 to 15 minutes for a Sikh marriage to be this is the actual marriage rest all is all traditions and all other things which go on Right? This is the actual 10 to 15 minutes, uh, the time which is there for the, uh, taken for the marriage. Yes. Again? Yeah. Cuisine need not uh, <laughs> discuss. Yes. This is the chula, sanja chula, the, uh, the tandoor. So in the villages, people used to, all ladies used to come together at one place and common kind of a chula for there. And then the, the kind of uh, gossip and talking, all that. And this is the village scene, which I have just put it for your. This is the actual village scene. Uh, that is how we, this is how we uh, uh, do things out there. And this is preparation of jaggery from sugarcane. This is we have eaten directly from here this hot jaggery while they were preparing. So this is what we enjoy in the villages. Yes. Further, yeah, folk songs again related to all the love stories and all the marriages. Bolia, Soha, Ghoria. These are all the uh, names of those uh, songs which are sung on, on a particular occasion. Right? That is of the marriage occasion as such. Kolia and Sohag, Kolia and all this. Yes, further? Uh, yes, Kevin, I'll let you know. Yes. The most common instrument, yes, Tabla Sitat. The most uh, uh, first instrument, what Guru Nanak Dev Ji, uh, Rabab uh, Mardana was there. Uh, he used to play that Rabab. Rabab is the first uh, instrument uh, which we uh, know about as far as the Sikh community is concerned. Yes, Dhol and all others. Fairs and festivals. Lot is there to talk about all these festivals. Uh, we need to uh, talk about Diwali is celebrated just to, for your information. Diwali is celebrated when Guru Hargobind Singh Ji uh, left with 52 prisoners from the Gwalior Fort, uh, right, when he was released. So he stitched a choga of 52 Kalis. He, uh, he, uh, first Guruji only was to be released but Guruji said I want everyone to be released. So he stitched a choga of 52 Kalis and every a uh, prisoner uh, along with him they each one is to has to hold one kali so jitne wo kaliyon ke sath nikal jayenge release ho jayenge they all were released so that was in that celebration is where the release of uh, this uh, guru har gobind ji hola malla again a sikh martial art which is there and some of these are very common uh, festivals as such but some are particularly the sikh uh, yeah, it's a Sikh martial art which is uh, exhibited on Hola Mala, which I'll further is there in the photos. Quickly, please. Yeah, this is uh, that Kali uh, Hargobind Singh Ji, that Chola which he wore had Kali, yes. These are all the festivals. Yeah, you can see uh, here, this is the Gatka martial art. Yes, please go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, Gatka is the martial art which was started by Hargobind uh, Singh Ji, uh, right after uh, 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 it was started for creating the martial uh, art, the group. Uh, that that kind of a community as such. So here they exhibit all this uh, talent of warfare techniques, what we call them as, right? So that is what you will get to see in lots of organization in Bombay who conduct this at different places. We do also conduct at Khalsa College. So these are, uh, there is where you will get to know the you know, strategy and uh, what things are. These are say, some kind of things which are used. So it's a martial art, Gatka, it's called as Gatka. Yes. Yeah, sports is a uh, kind of uh, organized at Kilaraipur, very popular uh, mini rural sports where you have all these kinds of activities happening and the games like uh, similar to uh, other regions also but uh, only names are different you know these are different names for the those games which are similar you can see the pictures ahead 
Yeah, here you can see this. We call it as Lagori year. So they are known by different different names. Kushti and uh, these things were very very popular in the villages as such. Yes. Yeah, an art and craft of the six. Further, you can see the pictures. Pictures you can see, please. Next. Yeah, these are some of the art and craft of the uh, community which they do. That is in in uh, in Punjab basically in different regions. What you get to see. Yeah, this is charkha and the needlework and Punjabi juktis and fulkari again a very important one. Yeah, this is fulkari what you call it. There are two types of uh, such kind of uh, fulkari what you one it one you call them as bag. Which in which you will not be able to see a single, uh, not inch, centimeter, not even a single point of the cloth on which that is woven by hand. And one is the fulkari, which has uh, different different designs, but where the cloth is visible. So bag and fulkari, that is. So we have seen those in a uh, number of pictures. And this is the pakki, very uh, we ha have that traditionally made as such hand woven kind of thing, the hand fan. But all that is decorated uh, very beautifully with handwork. Yes, yeah, this is what the Fulkari weaving you can see. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. I know there was so much information that. Uh, yeah, not, yeah. yeah. Uh, very quickly, I will uh, run through a few questions that we uh, have today. Uh, the first mm -hmm. question was from Kairan who asked what the Amrit is made of. What is? When uh, when we do Amrit Chakna, what is the Amrit made of? Amrit is water and patasha. Uh, that is a sugar, uh, white color. What do you call it? Patasha. Patasha, we call it patasha. Uh, I think that is what is also given in the church when fathers, when they go for that communion, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah, that right. small piece, small piece of, that is also patasha only, what I have seen like. So it is a sweet and it's a, a water. And then you stir that, put that patasha in that and you go on stirring and say the prayers. Say the prayers. That is so that answers Parvez's question as well, which okay. is with is a figure of nature is it an actual liquid. Uh, Priyanka had asked which processions do the Panj Pyaras lead and why? All processions, that is religious processions. All religious processions. Which take yeah. place on Baisakhi and on the Guru. Yeah, all 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 uh, Guru Purabs, all Purabs which we have, and in that Purabs, when we have a procession, that has to be led by the Panj Pyaras and also cleaning the road before they put their step on it. There's a process of uh, again doing that. Yeah. Uh, Sridhar had asked that Nandir has a large Sikh community. Are they migrants from Punjab or are they local converts? No, they are. Uh, majority of them are locals. Majority of them, I would say 90 percent, 90, 95 percent are locals, are locals, yes. And they are managing the Gurudwaras and even the smaller Gurudwaras, they are uh, managing them, yes. Parvez had a question, uh, can different communities of Sikhs in the places where they come from be recognized from their surnames? No, I didn't get it, please. Can the different communities within Sikhs and the places where they come from be recognized from the surnames that they have? Oh uh, uh, yes, it so happens. It happens, yeah, because there are villages and villages of Chima, like I can say, of Chimas. So uh, there, there are you can recognize them from where they come. But uh, one thing I just missed out to talk about that uh, for uh, the six, the surnames should not be important because, as I said, sing and cause. When you take this uh, Amrit, you are called as a sing, so you are a prince. So there should not be a surname used. And a, uh, for the prince, princess, it is the call. So I should say, take my name as only Dr. Ravinder Kaur, not Chima. And that is what is the biggest, uh, I would say, the drawback of the community or the mistakes which we are doing. And we uh, still, I would say that uh, though Guruji's talked about equality, I must say here that uh, we, are, we have to do a lot as far as this caste and community is concerned. Though religion does not permit, but... There is, see, that influence of the Hindu community goes on, you know, that, that is how these things have, are still going on. But otherwise, we are not supposed to, definitely not. No casteism should be there in Sikhism. Malin had a question that he thought that there are more than 60,000 Sikhs in Mumbai. Yeah. If we include Hindus, there would be a considerable number of Punjabi speakers. Then yes, why yes. is there only one junior college in Maharashtra offering Punjabi as a second language? Uh, were enough measures not taken to promote the Punjabi language? 
uh, yes, to some extent, I would say yes. But the Vidhik society has started. Whatever schools the Vidhik society has started, schools I'm talking, they all have the Punjabi language in that. College is not there. Uh, not sufficient. Uh, this because another thing is that uh, you know, six students uh, also uh, are less as to coming to the institutions. That is the, another thing. But definitely, yes, school has, colleges also has. But then for higher studies, I think there need to be put in more efforts for starting more and more uh, higher studies institutions, which the Vidhik Society is definitely doing it. But Khalsa College, uh, SGPC, it is, own, it is run by the SGPC. We have not gone ahead for uh, building up any other. But within the institution, we have uh, GNIMS, we have the Management Institute also. But Ma Maharashtra has many, uh, many colleges. Maharashtra has, Mumbai doesn't have much. Maharashtra definitely has many colleges. But not run by the, all not run by the SGPC. Okay. And finally, of course, Kaiwan's question, uh, is the Sikh Museum at Khalsa College open to public? Yeah, Kaiwan. <laughs> Sikh Museum will be open for you as soon as we are out of this COVID. So the day everything is unlocked, I, I will definitely extend the invitation. Extend the invitation to all of you. All are most welcome. I have uh, gathered all this uh, material from Punjab. I have some original coins and so on, which will be uh, displayed. And uh, definitely everyone can visit. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone at Khaki Lab.